finally I got guests that appreciate the teddy bears, you know? Arnold Schwarzenegger didn't like the teddy bears. Being in the business. You know, personal space, I guess, you know. Mm -hmm. It can be intrusive at times. They, they what size are you, by the way? Size? Yeah, I always I'm like really to know. Sure. Sure. I You're not sure? Girls and oh, you know. That's so interesting. <laughs> Michelle thinks you don't have time to spend with her anymore. I'm madder than that. I'm sorry. Have you no decency? Hi, it's Editing Brownie here. Um, a lot of you are brand new and hello, hi, thank you so much for subscribing. Also, I just have to say um, I had already filmed this video like two weeks ago, so just a huge thanks to Tiffany Ferg for shouting me out because that was completely unexpected and I'm blown away by everyone's responses. I just wanted to say thanks, hi to everyone that's brand new and let's get right on into it. Hello lovelies and welcome back to my channel. You're here on a Tuesday and on Tuesdays we do deep dives into the environmental, social, ethical issues with the world and we also are working on this series about tragic icons. Now Mary Kay and Ashley Olsen absolutely do fit into this category but I'm not specifically focusing on just them. I want to focus on the bigger societal issues because they actually themselves have said that they want to be private so that is what I'm respecting with this. So whilst we will be talking about their lives we're also going to be talking about the bigger topics at hand. So if you're expecting a timeline of their lives go to Wikipedia like this is not for that. We are here about bigger themes and issues which is why I'm making this series in the first place. So obviously this is a very long video. There is a lot to talk about a lot to like unpick because they work in fashion now so if you work in fashion at all you'll understand that and thank you very much for everyone that voted on IG because you're the ones that actually picked the look that I did today because I was like do you want the 2000s or do you want the 90s people picked the 90s so that's what we've created today we've got Mary Kate on this side, Ashley on this side, both on my nails. Yes, I went that extra, so please leave a like down below. Don't forget to subscribe. Once I hit a thousand subscribers, then I'll actually be doing my Marilyn Monroe video, which will be amazing because I've been waiting to do that one. So please don't forget to subscribe. We're not that far off. We can do it. We're going to be creating this look on my face, and everything is cruelty free, vegan, not owned by parent companies that test my animals. And also, I want to have a bit of a trigger warning here as well because we're going to be talking about death, overdose. Uh, anorexia and eating disorders in general um, and stalking too so if you are sensitive to any of those please click away your mental health is way more worth a view on this video <laughs> so thank you lovers without any further ado let's get right on into it part one their childhood so given the fact that they were working from the age of nine months old and they're 35 now they've literally been working their whole entire lives their childhood, they kind of did have a childhood, but at the same time, they didn't really. It was so regimented, like, so strictly scheduled. Ooh. I think the laws when you're a baby are like, you can only work for 20 minutes, and then they would just swap the children out, you know, basically. And then, of course, like, Ashley cried more, and so Mary Kate had to pick up more hours. <laughs> As a baby. Literally everything was regimented from, like, whether you're going from an interview, to school, to homework, to the shoot to another interview, like everything was incredibly regimented for them their entire lives. Which has definitely been a thing that has impacted them, for sure. At least in my opinion from what I've seen from all of their interviews. And the thing is that their mum actually sent in like their picture on a whim because like she had a friend in the biz and then that was how they got hired to be on Full House and it's like I'm not trying to throw shade at people that do this stuff. This gives us a chance to like reassess about what a good thing is for the children as opposed to a bad thing for the children, not in terms of like putting the blame on the parents, but in terms of like society as a whole. So obviously these two are literal babies, so you think that they'll take direction, um, probably take direction a lot better than me. Yeah, it was definitely a struggle on the shoots, like John Stamos, I'm sorry to like burst your little childhood crush bubble, but he tried to get them fired and they brought in quote unquote a couple of ugly redheads. Um, rude but you know that wasn't working so they brought back the very very cute little pair of Aryan beauty girls because we have to acknowledge the fact that they are very very pretty girls. Full House ran from 1987 when they were nine months old until 1995 when they were eight years old so they've grown up on the entire show but the thing is that they didn't just make Full House they also made movies as you'll probably know along with songs along with having their faces on books all sorts of stuff like they were definitely 
like getting into the whole mogul sort of life when it comes to like how much can we market these two very beautiful little fraternal twins because they're not identical they're fraternal twins during the filming of full house because of course continuity they had to wear dentures each twin had their own like strength around acting so mary kate was better at the comedic stuff and ashley was better at the dramatic stuff so it's like what twin do we need for right now oh someone's got to cry we're getting for holding ashley if there's not a better way to describe hollywood <laughs> than that i don't know what is so they did heaps of films during this time and also their parents actually got divorced too but they're famous right so it's okay hell no now look i am the first person to retort when it comes down to like rich people saying oh money can't buy happiness money will not solve your problems excuse me money would actually solve 99 of my problems <laughs> It's actually normally a phrase that is used by rich people in a way to make them absolve of their guilt of the fact that they are not paying the right amount in tax and also kind of like objectively nefarious things in order to be able to gain their wealth and hoarding it as well. Um, so they just tend to say this as a saying to make themselves feel better about the wrongdoer that they actually know that they're doing, okay? What have we said many times here in the past? Children cannot consent. Whilst they gained a lot of money from all of this, I don't really know if it would be worth all the psychological damage that they had to go through. Now look, I'm not trying to insinuate that abuse ever happened. They haven't said that any of that happened. What I'm saying is like the psychological toll of growing up literally in the limelight and everyone watching you evolve like it's the Truman Show. Like, they don't even remember so much of the stuff that happened other than things that were like scary to them and sometimes they'll be able to remember like some snippets of it but then everyone else was able to like watch them go up. You know that I'm not comfortable with kids on camera anyway because the thing is this is in the limelight this isn't like children working in the mines or whatever not that i'm saying that it's okay for children to work at any time i'm just acknowledging the fact that the phone that i use it's like four years old has got like fingerprints of probably a four-year-old that had to like mine the resources necessary to actually build that mobile phone what i'm saying is like child exploitation happens everywhere this is just the case where you've got like two pretty faces attached to it so people care a bit more because they're also white oh was i just calling people out oh my god oh rude how how dare i so the thing is that they were growing up in the public eye and also they're girls and they're twins and they've got blonde hair and light green eyes disgusting oh stop it but there's a big problem with the olsen twins in particular which we will be talking about because i can't make a video about them without addressing this disgusting fact about humanity jewel star entertainment in my opinion was one of the absolute best things that they could have done for themselves no doubt this was with the help of their family. Now, another thing I just want to point out is the fact that I think that their family actually did a really, really good job in terms of like raising them in order to be able to cope with the awful machine that is Hollywood. Because they had a good foundation about privacy, about being discreet, about keeping like things close to home, keeping them very grounded, like their allowance wasn't ridiculous, like just in terms of like making sure that they had their feet on the ground and focusing on that privacy aspect I think was really really positive in terms of like helping them grow up to be as healthy as you can when you have to grow up in front of like literally millions of people all around the world. Jill Star actually has all 47 of the titles of the movies and all the music that the twins actually worked on together in their childhood. Like, you know all those direct DVD ones? Yeah, they're, they're all there. <laughs> all of the roles that they played were actually just pandering towards like what others wanted. It wasn't actually what the twins wanted at all. It was more about like what the public would want the cute little twin girls to be doing. So they didn't really enjoy any of the acting that they did. Like there may be some perks to it, but they definitely weren't like, oh my God, I really want to act. Which is something that maybe the parents would have worked on, but again, I'm speculating on all of this stuff. I don't know these people, so that's just my own personal opinion on this. And of course they had to fit into like the whole two types of girls sort of very basest argument which still exists to this day even though everyone's a multifaceted person but apparently you know like the two sides of Pinterest um yeah still a thing. And I know that me referencing Pinterest will definitely age me because wow how 2011 of me oh my god. So with the whole like there's only two types of girls sort of storytelling that literally just followed them forever like along with the tv shows like the ones that i grew up with which i loved which was two of a kind um please comment down below if anyone else was watching this because i loved that that was the first time that i ever actually discovered them was from the tv show i never watched full house i'm sorry i know terrible but i just didn't 
including in their last movie that they ever made together in New York Minute, which I had the displeasure of watching. Like, the girls are good actresses, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, um, this was made in 2004 and it's pretty racist. And also, why do we all like Simple Plan so much? Oh my gosh, they did not come across in, like, the best ways when I was watching this anyway. I was like, were they always this bad? Like... I don't think that they performed well at all, but hey, that's just me, sorry. That's the only movie of theirs that I can actually watch though. Come on, Jewel Star, just let me watch It Takes Two. Okay, I just really want to watch that. And also, I want to go to Paris and Italy, so I need to watch both of those as well. Both really, really wanted to get a higher education, so they applied to NYU and they got in. Like, it was still a stressful thing that they had to go through. Just in the same way that they had to give up going to prom in order to go on Saturday Night Live, which was one of their last performances ever, actually, together. And people were like, well, of course you choose Saturday Night Live. Um, actually, like, maybe having... Oh, hello, kitty cats. But, you know, maybe actually having, like those sort of formative experiences with your peers in a more normal way would actually be really really healthy for them and a really really good thing because we put too much emphasis on people getting famous and then having their lives literally torn apart as being like a good thing and they bought like a place in New York so then they could actually attend NYU and they're very very excited but the thing is when you're the most popular twins on the planet Sorry, Tia and Tamara, like, I grew up watching your show and I loved it, um, and racism is a thing that still exists, so I would have to say that the Olsen twins were, and sadly still are, more famous. And then you're trying to attend higher education where you are not safe. So you've got people that are reporting on you behind your back, you've got people that you do not know if you can trust to be their friends, you've got paparazzi blocking them from me from being able to go to class, and then you've got people who are like acting like they could be friends, who weren't actually friends, they just wanted to be able to sell stories on them. Um, and also you'd be dealing with stalkers and everything else bad around that, and the usual breakups and everything else that are all part of growing up. So you combine all of that together, I am not one bit surprised that they left and they quit because they couldn't handle it. So Mary Kate quit first and then Ashley did shortly afterwards. So the thing is that because they'd spent all of this money and they'd done everything like by the book, they didn't use their money in order to be able to get into this place, they actually wanted to earn their way in like through their brains because their whole lives they'd still been studying, they'd still be doing all of this other extracurricular stuff on top of like working all the time as children. Sorry if you can hear sounds, the cats have suddenly decided now is the perfect time for a fight. So fame it makes me think of, you know that old tradition where people would like tear a piece of the bride's dress off for like good luck after they've gotten married? So kind of like that, but then you think about Cinderella with the evil stepsisters just like tearing at the dress, getting picked apart by evil people that you're still expected to be nice to and have to live with. That's kind of what fame makes me think of. It's not something that I think is like a positive at all. Let's have a brief discussion about their dating life. So the girls are pretty private, and even more so now, obviously. Didn't want things to go public unless they made them public, so I'm going to be respecting that whilst we're having this discussion about their relationships and their dating life. Of course, people, I need to address the whole Heath Ledger thing because, like, rest his soul. And this is something that I think is like one of the most ugly sides of celebrity culture because everyone was always speculating like they'd been friends for only a few months so obviously he passed away via overdose and then there was the fact that the masseuse that discovered him actually called Mary Kate like three times before actually calling the police and so people were like oh my gosh there must be like a link between them and then the speculation and then went to court even I believe just this whole thing um constantly speculating on whether they were together, whether she was like the drug dealer for him and all this other stuff. Like, I don't know about you, but I don't think that you were ever actually invited to this party to talk about it. Mary Kate herself never actually confirmed having anything more than a friendship with him. So that is what we're gonna stick to, okay? Yeah? Cool. But the thing is that everyone just kept speculating. So she was hounded by paparazzi, including them accusing her of being the one to give him the drug basically saying that she killed him. Have I said before that paparazzi is scum? Because I can say it again. It must have been a really challenging time for her, dealing with the loss of a friend who she really, really cared for, and being accused of basically being his murderer. Like, I... It's just disgusting. She couldn't even mourn him. Honestly, for me, I just hope that she got the help that she would have needed after the loss of a friend. And then of course we have her marriage to Olivia Sarkovsky and the fact that that ended in divorce and apparently like 
he was trying to kick her out of the apartment in 2020 giving her like too short a time frame to be able to get her stuff out of it which would have meant that she'd have lost like all of her possessions honestly i can understand why she'd want to be keeping things under wraps and that's why i'm not going to say anything more on it the only reason i'm bringing up these two instances is because they get talked about so much and i'm like cool so you've got this thing nothing was confirmed you got this thing which she also wants her privacy on this is the stuff that she's gone public on so that's it obviously as she's been in relationships they've both been in other relationships and it's like okay cool whatever you are fully grown people you're allowed to date who you want no one's questioning me in my marriage so why should we be questioning her <laughs> mary kate allegedly had an eating disorder now, she's never confirmed nor denied this. She did go in for treatment as a teenager. I think it was just after New York Minute. So the thing is that her parents weren't able to actually help her through, like, traditional methods at home. So that's why she went to go get help for it. And it's like, cool, that's fine. And that's all I'm going to say on the matter. The reason that I wanted to raise this was because the height of their fame was in the late 90s to early 2000s. We need to reflect on what the landscape was like in the 90s and 2000s. You had the waif and then you had the tanned waif who had a boob job and that was basically it. So there's this very much white heteronormative super skinny hip bones sticking out sort of like vibe that was like the thing along with your very low rise jeans which i hope that we don't bring back because i literally have a dent in my stomach from wearing low rise jeans because they didn't fit me properly so thanks and there were some of the most photographed people on the planet as well you need to recognize like the fame level of these two was so unbelievably high paparazzi following them from being children so they watch them go from girl to womanhood and then also constantly body check and assess like how they were growing up oh what else did magazines do at this time oh yeah that's right they fat shamed literally everyone regardless of whether they were fat or not and made skinny people feel like they were fat as well because it made money the only thing i missed the 2000s for was the frosty makeup and then also if there was the tiniest bit of weight gain, there was always like a pregnancy speculation, which is still something that happens even to this day. So magazines were doing all of this, and in particular to the Olsen twins, like it was either speculating on whether someone was too skinny, which often did happen to these two, in particular to Mary-Kate, which would not have helped. The only reason that they were doing this was to sell more papers. It wasn't actually for her own benefit at all. It's a wonder that celebrities can keep a sound mind when it comes to the destructive power of the paparazzi and also the public opinion. Which is a video that we are working on as well. It may come out in November because there's just a lot, <laughs> a lot of work that needs to go into that. Their bodies were, and still are, photographed from every single angle, um, despite them obviously not wanting to be photographed to this day, like, they actively say no, and people are still doing it. I'm sorry, what was it about the Me Too movement and learning about consent? Oh, no one actually learned it? Awesome. Fabulous. And of course, what are women taught from a very, very young age? Your only assets are your youth and your beauty, and they both have to fit into this very narrow little standard and that's the only way that you can actually be deemed to be acceptable also it has to be like around a very white specific sort of heteronormative kind of like male gaze kind of vibe as well if anyone has issues around like needing control and regiments in their lives which i know that these two actually did have to deal with like their whole life being super regimented like this would easily destroy you we just need to stop supporting this trash like do not look at it do not buy it what the hell who's still buying those magazines don't click on it don't like it don't engage with it at all like seriously there are way better things for you to spend your time looking at rather than just whether someone's gained five pounds i mean genuinely who cares far out speculation central and fanatic there are articles and videos specifically formulated to just focus on speculated procedures like whether it's non-invasive or plastic surgery that the twins have had i've even watched one of these i was really really grossed out by it but whatever pays the bills i guess and of course paparazzi is still following them around to this very day despite the fact that they've openly said that they do not want to have paparazzi around them but you know oh my gosh that was way too much blush I need to talk about the fanatics because like millennials like me we grew up with them and so like there is this sort of like nostalgic affinity and I kind of do get it but it's actually not just millennials that are making like these fan pages it's actually also a swell of a movement from Gen Z who really really appreciate the Olsen style and it's like okay cool I get it like wanting to emulate like the style of like people that are actually like really styling things well and trendy and all this other stuff but there are fan accounts fully made up of like pictures of them 
when they're caught by paparazzi as opposed to ones when they were actually posing on a red carpet or like for an event or something um and then they are making friends with their friends and like stalking their friends accounts to see like where they are like stalking where mary kate and ashley hang out and will be so then they can go see like just them in real life or just knowing all of this stuff and i'm like wait hold up what it kind of borderlines on unhealthy and i've seen people in interviews try and like rationalize it so i know that they don't want people taking pictures of them and stuff but i'm sure that they'd actually really appreciate the fact that they've got so many fans that like love what they do and it's like well actually they gave up their entire childhood for people to do that and they opted out of it so this is like the worst side of parasocial relationships i'm obviously not going to share any of the pages on here because i do not want hate to go their way what I'm saying is like this is something that we need to assess as a society is like whether it's healthy or not. Personally I don't think it's like healthy when people have specifically said that they do not want to get followed around and then you're sharing these pictures of them being followed around. And also checking in on where they are and following that. It just feels really wrong to me when they've openly said that and you acknowledge that. Now you may want to say like oh but you're just being just as bad as them because you're making a video about them. It's like I hope that you know that like the way that I make these videos I spend such a long time working on them and looking into the people themselves to find out what they're comfortable with, what they're not, what the actual truth of the story is like I did with like Anna Nicole, Judy and Priscilla. Like the thing is that Mary Kate and Ashley ever since like they opted out of the limelight I'm not going to be sharing any pictures after that unless they're specifically sharing the one selfie they've ever publicly shared together or like at a red carpet event that they're happy to be photographed at that's it I'm not going to be sharing anything else I'm also talking about the bigger issues of like the way that we actually treat people that we've decided to put on a pedestal and just pick at and act like we own them this is the ickiest part as a warning we need to talk about fetishism the twin thing i'm gonna put my mascara on and talk over this because this will make me too angry so you've got kanye's song blank in paris uh referencing prince william marrying mary kate and ashley eminem's song um <laughs> but like that mary kate and ashley used to be so wholesome now they're getting older they started to grow bum bums are we disgusted enough yet Probably. I am. So most of the songs were actually by men sexualizing women in particular. The twin thing, right? We're, we're going there, we're having to talk about it, and I apologize. Of course this is all like sexualizing them in a very fetishistic way, which is a word I cannot say at all, I'm not gonna try again. <laughs> oh and yeah, of course, they would both sleep with you and come as a pair. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. They're not just consenting individuals, whatever. Stop being so gross people, please. So the way that they were in like photo shoots together, it wasn't even like siblings quite often, like there were really really suggestive and had like a sexual undertone and I'm like <laughs> they're siblings why why are you viewing them in this way together okay tell me if this is me projecting or if you see this as well as like how creepy some of these photos actually are maybe that's also because twins have just become so fetishized for so many years for some reason so look we also need to address the fact that they're very petite so Ashley is 155 centimeters, Mary Kate is 157 centimeters, so they're quite short. I mean, for example, I'm at 167 centimeters, so they're 10 centimeters shorter than me. And they're very petite, they have childlike features as well, so this, uh, this has just actually led to even more fetishization of them. Um, in particular, attracting a particular kind of person that likes people that are very young which is a word I can't say on here. I can't even imagine what it would be like being them and finding out the stuff that is on the internet about them, including the countdown clocks that were counting down until they were 18. And also there was an E! article that went up saying that they're no longer jailbait when they turned 18. You're seeing the problem here, huh? For, for reference, I couldn't even find the original article of this because I'm pretty sure that E! would have actually taken it down after they figured it. Oh, wait. This was actually the wrong thing to be saying. I got warnings come up on my browser when I was trying to find the title of this. Um, so I'm pretty sure that I'm on many watch lists now. Me, the person that's trying to highlight the issues of the world, I'm probably on a watch list. So 
that's fun. That's what I get for trying to have integrity with the, the reporting that I do, but allegedly there was an E article that's been referenced elsewhere about this, okay? There is actually a watch list from 2004 which was actually pointing out the problematic nature of all of this and saying just how creepy it was that countdown clocks are a thing. This is probably one of the only good things to actually come out of the 2000s. But this was not the opinion that most people had. Most people were completely okay with sexualizing young people and um, I mean, you can even look at people like Paul Courtney Stodden and so many other people like Lindsay Lohan and just... <laughs> I just want to say I'm not kink-shaming here. If people have a thing for the whole incest stuff, I'm not trying to kink-shame if it's done in a safe way. The problem here is that there is no consent. And this is actually putting it onto real-life people, which has real-life consequences. This is not something that is like a role-play in a bedroom. That's not what this is. This is something that has been put onto people against their will and being completely objectified, infantilized, and fetishized in ways that they do not want to be. That's my problem with this and that's why I want to just raise like how wrong this is. I'm not shaming the BDSM community or any kink community, that's not what I'm trying to do here. Oh my god, the interviews. I, if you have like a strong cringe reflex, you will not want to watch any of them. I'll have them on the screen and stuff with like captions, but like this is very awkward. So from when they were children, they were asked about their first kiss, about their virginity. In particular, that started to ramp up when they turned into teenagers. Totally normal thing to do, of course. I know that this has been a thing for as long as media has existed, but the intensity that the twins had to put up with was actually extreme. Oh yeah, we're feeling like 1999. So the intensity for like these sorts of questions got really unbearable for the girls. Now look, they are two very classy, well-raised girls. And honestly, I commend them for holding their cool as well as they did because I would have snapped. When it comes to like this sort of thing happening, you've got the flight, fight, freeze, or fawn response. And it looks to me like they had to fawn an awful lot in order to appease like the overlords that got to say like whether they were rude or not. Because that's the worst thing to be if you're a woman is being labeled a difficult woman. I get disappointed every day with the world. So they got really, really good at laughing things off and just trying to act like everything was very cool. Like, they kind of mastered this whole art of things. But they also were trying to set boundaries as well, saying that they're just very private, saying that they don't want to answer questions, and just trying to find ways to skirt around, like, the very invasive questions that were being asked of children. But most people, even still to this day, consider that to be the price of fame, like, you don't deserve privacy because this is the price you pay. Like, you earn such high amounts because you have no privacy and that's how it, what the whole system works. If you don't like it, you shouldn't have become famous in the first place. Me. In other words, you are now an object, you're no longer a person. Same as what happened to Anna Nicole Smith. <sighs> a joke. I mentioned before about Mary Kate actually needing help and the fact that they were, and still are, hounded by paparazzi. The butt of the joke so many times. Not as much as Britney or Anna Nicole, but so much. Um, being labelled as being druggies, being labelled as being anorexic, incredibly triggering and derogatory things to actually label people as, which are actually genuine struggles that people have to deal with, and it's like, what makes you think it's okay to joke about that? This was the 2000s and the 90s, though, very, very toxic times in terms of, like, the media and our attitudes towards people and not thinking of them as being individuals or people at all. There are still even comedians to this very day that just openly take jabs at them and take the mech out of them. I even found a YouTube channel that was founded on it and I'm like, they're still making videos in 2021. Why? Have we not learned anything? That, like the fact that people found it super funny in 2012 and people are still finding it funny now? Have we not progressed at all? I don't think so. It doesn't look like it. Definitely not to me. Products for days, obviously. Mary Kate and Ashley doll history. There is a whole video all about it, which I'll link for you down below. It got me a little worried. <laughs> There's Mary Kate and Ashley books, two TV shows that they acted in, one TV show that they voiced over, which was an animation, which I also watched. They had Total Girl magazine in Australia and New Zealand. They had the Mary Kate and Ashley magazine. They had fashion dolls. They had songs and CDs, a clothing line with Walmart, a fan club, perfumes. If you could slap their face on it, you would absolutely be able to make money out of it, basically. The thing that they actually both enjoyed doing was the fashion side of things. And so that was obviously the thing that got to lead them down their path later on in life. The thing that I really wanted to say, like, about their fashion line, like, I do really appreciate the fact that it was actually at a price point that their fans could actually 
like buy. We know that a lot of celebrity brands these days can be incredibly expensive and being able to buy from them for like children is very hard. So not only were these clothes affordable but they were also practical so I really do appreciate that. Granted this was at Walmart, granted it's still fast fashion and all of that stuff, I'm just wanting to reiterate the fact that I think that it was a good thing, that it was, it was actually thoughtful and done in a way where like you could mix and match things, where it wasn't just like awful merch like we still get today for many YouTubers, it was actually thoughtfully made and that's one thing I do appreciate and also they made sure to get paid maternity leave for their garment workers in, I think it was Bangladesh. Obviously with fashion being the thing that they both enjoyed doing, they would take that on full time later on which is one of the reasons why they went to NYU and everything and spent a year and a half making that famous t-shirt which is the thing that launched everything. But whilst Mary Kate is actually still looking at scripts even to this day according to like the most recent interview with her that I read, the thing is they're often actually it clashes with their schedule like any opportunities that come up like with Fuller House which the Fuller House cast and crew and everyone still decided to make jokes about in the filming of it and I'm like why are we doing this why are we here what's the point of this this just feels like an attack like it clashed with their multiple businesses they are no longer in the whole acting gig where you can uproot your whole life because that's kind of what you have to do to be able to be an actor or an actress but when it comes to fashion like you have like these set deadlines these places that you have to be in there are so heavily involved with their clothes because they are absolute perfectionists which i believe comes from a place in their childhood where they would constantly have to improve be working be improving and under such scrutiny from not only like the people around them, but then you've got the press and the public. If anything, this would have given them like, I don't know whether it's an imposter syndrome or just like this anxiety about constantly needing to be better and do better and be good at what you do. So yeah, we're actually just gonna get on to the whole fashion talk now. So when they were actually growing up, they would take grown up clothes and alter them because obviously, like I said before, they're very, very petite. So this is something that they would just do in order to be able to like wear clothes. And they got exposed to stylists from a very young age, whether it was for the movies or the TV shows or the music or whatever other thing that they were advertising. Um, and then they actually also had their stylist, Judy Schwartz, when they were in their teens and early 20s who was styling them as well and she taught them all about the layering sort of side of things because that was like how she used to dress. Not everyone is like me and wants to dress like Ashley did um, in the late 90s and 2000s. Um, clearly some of us mature, others of us don't. Totally fine, you do you. I'm quite happy to live my pastel fantasy. So whilst they had all of these brilliant minds around them, they also had their own taste, which is really, really important because this is something that they curated over the years as well. So they've got Elizabeth and James, which is their lifestyle brand, which is actually named after Elizabeth and James, their brother and sister. And then they own the row as well, and they didn't want to have their names attached to it. Like even, for example, the way that the brand is done, like it's just the gold chain is like the symbol that this is from the row and that's it. It's like that is your tag. They don't even have the row, they don't have anything about like being Mary Kate and Ashley. They didn't want to be the faces of it at all. They just wanted to make luxury and fashion and fashion that was in the way that they wanted fashion to be. There's a really really good interview that which I'll link for you down below. It's quite long but I'll be giving you some of the cliff notes and some of the quotes from them both. I think we're very much perfectionists and hard workers. We've always been hard workers, said Mary Kate. So I am happy that people look at it as a perfect product or products that feel complete or whole. I think the reason that we do fashion is constantly trying to fix our imperfections and you always have next season to do that. It's also our job to find every imperfection there is to make sure that we're constantly pushing ourselves and training our eyes and making sure that everyone is served, just evolving and learning. If a quote kind of sums up a lot of the damage that's been done to these two, I think that's it. The word luxury is used pretty much everywhere now, but for us it's something that makes your life easier, she points out. The idea that you could buy something off the rack, put it on your body and it already feels like a part of your wardrobe, that's luxury, you don't even have to think about it. If you've ever had your body constantly scrutinised by people, being able to just put something on that doesn't have to get altered or taken out or let in or whatever else, like having to live your whole life like that, I can completely understand why that they would like design things in this sort of way. The prices are super high, not something I would ever buy for me personally, but they are all couture pieces handmade by people that are actually being paid properly the thing that I really do appreciate, and they're also timeless, they're not on the fast fashion trend, they're just trying to create beautiful pieces which are perfect. 
nothing is like the sort of sense of new money like where things are just labels and you think about when people like stumble into money or just get money quickly um, and then they'll just buy like the flashiest thing that's not what this is this is kind of like the understated this makes me think of like you know if we ever live through the purge just to bring things down like a whole lot of pegs in terms of darkness um, but people would more be inclined to go after the Jeffreys and the showy people of the world as opposed to people like the Mary Kates and Ashes of the world because some people are way more showy with their wealth which is just gross to society <laughs> whereas this is more like understated classic like old money chic which is why it's got so many accolades and so many people love it that are of like higher status everything is discreet and very controlled like them like they were raised to be very discreet which is a good thing i'm not saying it's not i think that that's the thing that's been able to carry them this far honestly so even though they're not in it for the fast fashion i do have to point out the fact that they use animal fibers a lot and also from silkworms to fur to skin everything not just from an ethical but an environmental standpoint i'm completely against this and i will be making a video about this i'm gonna bump one of my other videos to make this video so getting back to the style of their clothes they're too big on purpose it's almost like an armor but also a hug at the same time because the clothes are made to be too big you'll never feel like constricted by it you'll never feel judged by your clothes if you've ever dealt with an eating disorder at all and um, then you'll understand like these sorts of like feelings of like the body checking by how far like your jeans sit off your hips or um those little things i've definitely been there wasn't a good time for me the times that i've been there in my life and also if you're hounded by the paparazzi i you understand why you'd want to be feeling like you're somewhere safe and if you're feeling safe in your clothes it's one of the best things for you let's get on to my final thoughts so they never actually wanted to be in the public eye and they didn't actually enjoy it either. Now look, I'm glad that they've been able to find their passion for fashion, hashtag me in high school when I thought I'd get into the fashion industry but then I discovered everything dark about it and I didn't want to anymore. I like the fact that they're creating things to last and that fit in the way that they want to, the fact that they're getting joy out of what they do. The one critique that I've got is like, since they're actually dealing only with rich people and it's a very, very exclusive sort of like 1% that can really, well, one to ten percent that can really afford this right i would love for them to invest in research and development into environmentally friendly fabrics there's already fabrics on the market which are out of reach for a number of other people but you can have the echelons the rich ones the ones up in the nice boxes at the side of the opera that can afford this nice stuff so i would love for them to expand into that area you know instead of sticking to like cruella's idea of luxury because we don't like her despite what disney has tried to say with that movie that i did enjoy we do not like Cruella. Let's not follow in her footsteps with fashion, okay? Other than that, as you'll have seen throughout this whole video, I just want to respect the fact that they've put up their boundaries, the fact that they want to be left alone, and I think that this is one of those things where we just need to realise as a society, like, focusing on a few people that we've deemed to be worthy of focusing on is not actually a healthy thing. <laughs> putting people on pedestals, I keep on telling you we should not be putting people on pedestals. I really wanted to have this as an opportunity to talk about the societal issues at play, and there are many when it comes to the Olsen twins. The thing is that they gave us their entire childhood, so I don't think that any of us should feel owed to knowing, like, what they're wearing like every single day of the week and just like being invasive in their lives because I would certainly hate that. I don't know about you, but like if I have people hounding me and having like fan accounts where they're just taking candid pictures of me without my permission, I'll be hella mad. So they've made it very clear they want to be left alone, just do their work, be known for that, here for it, go for it, whatever. You gave us your entire childhood, that's enough. We do not need more than that. So if you made it all the way to the end of this very, very long video, I really, really do appreciate it. If you did, please leave the dancing girls emoji because I think that makes the most sense because for all of the time that they had to perform, they felt like they were dancing monkeys. And I think that's just the perfect thing to end this on. And what are your thoughts on all of this? I'd be really, really keen to hear what you think because I know that I kept a lot of things more under wraps and talked about the bigger issues around this. But I'd be very keen to hear what you think around those bigger issues. Thank you, lovers, so much for watching. I'll see you on Sunday for a review and also next week for debunking environmental myths when it comes to using animal products in fashion. So don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you again next time. Bye!